No doubt each of us have experienced that old saying that says, if something seems too good to be true, then it probably is. And you probably have come across a time in your life where that has seemed to be true. And, and today we're going to be looking at a guy who in his life realized that though the world may have a lot to offer in the sense of a temporary pleasure or temporary desire being met, in the long run, in reality, sin is just something that seems too good to be true. And in reality, it's not good at all. And there's nothing good about it. And we're going to look at that today. But today we're going to be looking at, at faith, looking in Hebrews chapter 11 about a man by the name of Moses. And Moses had the opportunity to actually live within the Pharaoh's uh, home and and live there in the, in the uh, realm of that majesty and of that kingdom. And yet he chose rather than to do so to live with the children of Israel and and that God recognized that this was not only faith, but that it was faith that brought about great success in others, meaning that he lived by faith and through that faith, he was able to encourage and direct others to also live by that faith. Let's look together today at Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to read several verses uh, in particular about Moses. Several verses are written about him in this chapter uh, that really show us and reveal to us uh, this sense of faith of what Moses believed in, how Moses lived his life, and what a difference it made, uh, not only for him, but also for the descendants of Israel, uh, the children of Israel, as they inherited the kingdom of, or inherited the promised land. But let's look together. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to begin reading with verse 24. The Bible says, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Let's pray together as we open up. Father, we thank you for your words as they're written in Scripture. And God, we thank you for giving us the Bible to be able to look and, and examine men of faith and women of faith to, to help us be encouraged and help us to, to, to understand what it means to not only live by faith, but to deny the pleasures of this world. God, we know that in you great things happen, and Father, we pray that as we study your word that you might just even now reveal things to us to help us really grab hold of this concept that faith in you is greater than all the fallacies of the world. And so in you today, we give thanks and we give praise. For it's in your name we pray, and amen. I want you to uh, look today at Moses and examine his life and see for your own self and your with your own eyes that Moses had an opportunity to actually be there in the home. There he was He was being raised by Pharaoh's daughter. Remember that he was put into the brook or into the river and, and literally was cast out to drown. But instead, Pharaoh's daughter actually found the basket that Moses was in, took Moses and uh, brought Moses into the family there with Pharaoh and even allowed the mother to, to take care of, of Moses as he grew up. And as we read this passage of scripture in Hebrews chapter 11, we see and we hear that Moses had the opportunity to actually live in Pharaoh's house when he came of age, when he was at a time in his life as an adult that he could make choices. He chose instead to live with the children of Israel than to enjoy all the pleasures of, of Pharaoh's home and Pharaoh's house. He chose to be instead an inhabitant of the Israelites there uh, at, with God. And so we see that Moses exercised a faith that said that he believed not only that God took care of him and, and, and literally preserved his life there as he was put in the bulrushes and there as he was set free in the brook to, to drown and yet God saw fit to take care of and, and save his life. As he became an adult and as he went into his adult life, he realized that, he, that if he was going to be a man of faith, if he was going to be a person that was pleasing to God, he had to be willing to give up all that Pharaoh had to offer to accept all the things that God in turn would, would provide for him. A, a lot of people sit there and ask the question, what's in it for me or what's it worth to me? And 
I think Moses took the time to realize that that for me or for Moses rather, it, it was important that he lived by faith, that he, he actually give God credit and give God glory for preserving his life from a young age all the way up till adulthood. And that it was important for him to go ahead and honor that by also living a life of faith through his adult years. We see later on that God calls upon Moses to go and approach Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to allow the children of Israel to leave and to go and to worship. And Pharaoh balked on that. He didn't want to allow that to happen. But Moses, in faith, continued to come time and time and time again, explaining to Pharaoh, God wants his people to be let go, to go and to be able to uh, to pray and to worship him. And each time he'd go back to Pharaoh and say that God had instructed Pharaoh to let his people go. But Pharaoh in his heart had hardened himself to say no each and every time until ultimately it got to the last plague. And we know the last plague uh, is that the angel of death would come through and wherever there was blood on the post uh, and over the door that the death angel would go by. But anywhere that that blood was not applied, the death angel would go in and would literally kill the firstborn son uh, of each family. And so with that, Pharaoh finally uh, acquiesced and said, Moses, take the children of Israel and leave and depart. Get away from me and get away from Egypt. And so Moses takes the children of Israel and begins the journey and leads them out. And then we get to this last verse, verse 29, where it says, By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. And we know that Moses, when he finally got to that sea and, and right there at the Red Sea, looked out and the water was there and, and there just wasn't a way to pass over. The, the army of Egypt was coming after them. They chose to change their mind and chase after the children of uh, Israel and bring them back as captive. And yet God set a barrier between the children of Israel and that army. And there the uh, Pharaoh's army was uh, encamped. And ultimately God told Moses to stretch forth his hand. And sure enough, the sea parted and they walked on dry land to the other side. Pharaoh's army, seeing that, chose to chase after and to follow the, the Israelites with the intent of bringing them back as slaves. And as they get into the water and as the water begins to, to recede back and come back, it literally drowns the Egyptian army. And so we see that it is faith that preserved the life of Moses, not only from birth, all the way through, even through the exodus of Egypt as the children of Israel left Egypt and went to seek the promised land and, and, and inherit that which God had promised them. All by faith. Now, we've been talking over the past several weeks about people looking forward to, to this inheritance of the promised land, people looking forward to, to the day coming when God would, would honor his promise and, and that the Israelites would, would actually see it to fruition. And we talked about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and, and we talk about now Joseph all the way down to Moses. And here we have Moses finally beginning to execute what God had set in motion, this promise of giving the children of Israel the promised land. All of it was accomplished by faith. I'm here to tell you that by faith, you too can receive a promised land. By faith, you can ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and save you. By faith, you can inherit the kingdom of God, which we call heaven. But it all comes by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you're listening and you're lost and you've never asked Christ into your life, I encourage you today, would you surrender your heart to him and exercise faith in Jesus? For the Christian, as we look forward to the day of Jesus' return, it could be today. It could be any day this week. It could be any day this year, any day this century, any day that God chooses to send Jesus back could be the day and will be the day that he comes and returns and receives us unto himself. So as Christians, we need to be about sharing and, and promoting and preaching the gospel that says Jesus has come to seek and to save those who are lost. And as Christians, we need to be people of faith that lead others to Christ, just as Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land that God had promised. We too need to lead lost people from sin to salvation and ultimately to this great place called heaven, this eternal life that we find in Jesus Christ. I ask and pray that you join me at this time in prayer, praying that every lost person might receive Christ. If you're here and you're listening and you're lost, I pray that you might receive him as your Savior as we pray right now. Father, I pray that even as, as this moment has come, that every person that's listening that's lost might turn to you and ask for forgiveness of sin, seek you, 
that they might be saved. God, we pray that Christians might live a life that is abundantly clear to all around that, that you are the whole reason and our whole purpose for why not only we live, but the reason why we, we look towards faith and, and look towards the promise that you've given us of eternal life with Jesus Christ. Bless us tonight. Bless each person that's listening in. May you be honored and glorified. For it's in your name we pray. And amen. And I'm so glad that you tuned in as uh, a message to our members at church. I would like to uh, remind you that uh, Brother Gary and Miss Brenda have asked that if you're going to be sending your tithes in by mail, send it to the church, please, as uh, they've asked you not to send it to their home directly, but rather send it to the church. And they, they check the mailbox each and every day. So please send it there. And don't forget this coming Sunday, we'll be meeting again. Uh, our doors will open uh, at 1030. We'll have our worship time at 11. Uh, and we have different things set up to, to protect uh, for those who may be uh, uh, for, uh, may be concerned about the coronavirus and those sorts of things, we have many things set up to protect you, uh, all in compliance with CDC guidelines. And, and so we just ask that you might come and participate. If you'd feel more comfortable uh, worshiping in your car and, and hearing that, then we will be broadcasting on, uh, on 104.1. That travels about a distance of a mile there at the church. So uh, you'll need to be there either in the church parking lot or in the vicinity. Uh, but we invite you to come and participate, whatever makes you feel comfortable in doing so. But uh, we just ask that you have a great blessed week and that God just uh, blesses you in a special way. God bless.